Silent Hill commentary with me, Scully the Metalhead. Today we're gonna enter the sewers. Let's go! Woohoo! Yeah. I don't know why people feel the need to put sewer levels in damn near every video game, man. I mean, seriously. So with that, y'all. Anyway, we find out that the gate is locked, and the only way to destroy it is to attack it with the Hammer of Justice. The Hammer of Justice can do anything practically, it can destroy locks, it can bring down nurses. There's practically nothing it can't do. In fact, if you wanted to get the TV remote and you were just too lazy to get up, you could just use the Hammer of Justice and it won't break, but it'll just like fly towards you. What am I go- well, where am I going with this tangent? I have no idea, but hey, I gotta fill the void somehow. Anyway, let's just do a quick check from here. Uh, yeah, one thing to bring up in the sewer area of the game is that your radio uh, will not work underground, which means you won't be able to yeah excuse me, that means you won't be able to detect the monsters, which uh, is not really that big of a sacrifice in my mind, because like, I mean for as helpful as the radio is, like, uh, I don't think it's that pointless, but I don't know, I mean the monsters will still be there anyway, like, so, if anything, I think it kind of emphasizes the fear a little bit. Well, that's really because the radio in this game sounds a little bit more like a school bell than it does, like, you know, an actual radio. I mean, in 2 and 3, and uh, 4, technically speaking, you can have, like, a very staticky sound, but in this game it just sounds like, uh... I can't really impersonate the radio sound that much, but, uh, yeah, that's just the gist of it. Well, uh, fun fact, I believe, I'm not sure if it's in this sewer area or another one coming up, but, uh, it is towards the end of this area that you'll actually get a good look at the mumblers, the enemies which were fairly present in the European release, you know, due to the whole Grey Children scandal. And, uh, yeah, this is the only place you can see them in the, uh, North American version. I think also in the Japanese version as well, but I'm not too sure about that. Look at all these fine hallways. You know, why the hell do, why the hell do movies and video games set tend to make sewers so fucking, uh, glamorous or whatever, like... I mean, are sewers actually like this? Because, I mean, if you have, like, maybe this is just me being culturally ignorant, but in Australia, like, sewer, the sewers are just fucking drain pipes and shit, man. Like, dude, seriously, it's a bloody, like, stream of piss, shit, and whatever the hell else goes down there. I don't know. That's probably a discussion for another time about sewer systems and shit. Uh, these are some other creatures, which, in my opinion, are kind of the odd one out in the entire game. I mean... Far, far be it from me, but we have had, like, uh, dogs, bats, children, and all sorts of other things, but, like, I don't know, these creatures feel a little bit more alien than, uh, demon to me. That being said, however, I do really like their design, which I think is pretty cool. I'm pretty sure these enemies are called the Hanging Scratches, if I remember correctly. Pretty sure they are. I also like the sound they make, like, the, uh, creaking sound. It sounds very, uh... Oh damn, what was that? Ah, uh, sounds very Jew on the Grudge-esque. Uh, Christ. So yeah, this is a bleak sewer area. There's a boat down there. Why the hell would you need a boat to go down in the sewers? Kinda reminds me of that one Futurama episode where Fry and Leela come across mutants. Oh god, I'm so lonely and nerdy. Gonna be so lonely and nerdy. So, uh, anyway, you, you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really be bound to get lost in this area, although, like, the fact that you don't have a map to start off with is a bit disorientating. And also, uh, you know, whenever you see items like this, I'm pretty sure that usually signifies that the enemies are going to attack you, because, you know, there's a precious status drop, suddenly an ambush. Can't remember if it's, if it's this one or not. Probably not, but, you know, ever, be ever watchful. I gotta stop stumbling over my words. I gotta admit though, it does have a nice atmosphere, if only for the fact that it's quiet. <laughs> a quiet moment in Silent Hill? Get the fuck out of here, man. That door will be locked, it's the one on the other side. Running. Running. Very eerie in this sewer. Is it around here where you get the map? I am not quite sure. Ugh. <sighs> Christ, I'm running out of things to talk about, and we're in a fairly creepy area. Could just shut the fuck up and let you guys soak in the atmosphere, but that would defeat the purpose of a commentary, you gotta keep going. Oh, on the plus side, you can find, uh, some stuff here, I think that's a save point. Oh no, wait, that's the map, silly me. 
Uh, I need a joke about the sewers down here. This place smells. I'd assume it would. I mean, I'm surprised Harry's not fucking gagging right now. Especially considering the fact that we're in Silent Hill. I mean, Jesus Christ, I wonder what sort of hellish abomination is down here. Aside from the Hank scratches. Yes, take that. What a bang up job you did there, Harry. Another weird thing about the hang scratches, actually, is that they actually move even after they're technically considered to be dead. I don't know why that is, but hey, whatever works, man. Uh, is this the trap area? Nope. Oops, spoilers. And oh my god, the fucking phone's ringing. Excuse me for a brief second, I might have to take this. And I'm back. Uh, I don't think I missed much. Well, anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, well, at least we're a bit further down the line. I don't think anything interesting. Actually, you know what? Upon retrospect, I don't think anything interesting is really going to happen in this part. Just sewers upon sewers upon sewers. Hey, I wonder if this is what Mario sees whenever he goes down a pipe. Like if he had to, like if he has to battle against hang scratches and, you know bugs and shit, man. I wonder if this is what he sees. That will make for an interesting Mario game. So, oh, well, I already kind of have that with Luigi's Mansion, but, uh... Yeah. Oh, God, I need something to talk about. You know, let's be nostalgic for a minute and go back to the playable teaser, and how, long, how I feel the need to incessantly bitch about it. Ugh. I guess I could continue on the topic of the fact that I don't- that I really hope Hideo Kojima doesn't try and make Silent Hill go, you know, all big budget with, you know, big stars and shit, cause like, again, the one thing I always loved about Silent Hill that it was always seemed to be, or at least in my opinion, a very much well work with what you got sort of game, like kind of, like in a similar in a sense of a very, a very good Hollywood, well not a Hollywood, just like a B movie, you know? Or at least a cult film, you know, similar to like, uh, fucking, I don't know. Uh, for, the, for the lack of a better word, I'd say, like, Session 9, which was, like, a bigger influence in Silent Hill 2, I believe. Like, I always got the impression that it was, like, working with less rather than having it, like, all big and fancy and shit. And, the, you know, the fact that Hideo seems to need feel the need to bring on, like, you know, big-name directors and big-name stars, to me, it gives me kind of the impression that he wants to make Silent Hill, like, a big franchise, which, in my opinion, will kind of bastardize its appeal a little bit, because, you know, you'll have, like, a lot of... Oh, I suppose, you know, with face cams and shit going, Oh my god, guys, this game is so scary. I've been with the franchise since the beginning. And, you know, you might call that a bit of an elitist um, perspective on this. And, you know, who doesn't want their precious Silent Hill to be tainted with those of the noob. You know, but at the same time, I really don't want the appeal of Silent Hill to be bastardized. I mean, say what you will about the Tom Hewlett era. I mean, God knows I have against games like Origins and Homecoming, but... You know, at the very least, they, st they, in spite of their bad quality, you know, they still maintain the feel of Silent Hill because Tom Hewlett, at his core, was still a Silent Hill fan, regardless of whether or not his ideas were about as warped as fucking Jonathan Davis's vocals. But that's just me, you know? Like, I don't, I don't know if anybody else really shares my thoughts on this. I mean, granted, I'm still looking forward to the game, but, I don't know, it's just a niggling feeling in the back of my mind that... You know, Hideo is just gonna wrap this sort of huge storytelling thing, and the only sort of thing, sense that's gonna be made out of it is nano machines, because you know that really worked for Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear. Good God, I spent this entire time bitching about fucking playable teaser. Well, it got us through a couple of minutes. The commentary just gets worse and worse every minute. Let's draw out this long, ominous hallway. I think it is in the next part where you see the uh, mumblers. Mumbler, fucking. Ugh, I'm running out of shit to say. Hmm. Well, uh, bringing 
back Shadow Memories for a brief second. I think this is the only other sort of area that they bring back for Shadow Memories, or at least the one that's, you know, the least changed. Well, that being said, Shadow Memories, like, changed a fair bit, actually, which I kind of appreciate, to be perfectly honest. Like, I mean, granted, I would have loved to have seen Silent Hill get the Resident Evil remake treatment, you know, like, similar to Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, you know, having, like, a complete, you know, graphical remake and all that, but... I don't know, I think Shadow Memories was pretty good, at least in terms of, like, giving a new perspective to the Silent Hill franchise, which I felt could have used a lot of further expansions I've mentioned before. But oh well. Actually, you know what, I... and... Uh, going on to the subject of the Silent Hill HD collection, you know, I honestly believe that the reason they didn't include Silent Hill uh, 1 on the HD collection, you know, so, and as opposed to, like, having just 2 and 3 there, I honestly believe because that would have ended up forcing you know, the evil Tom Hewlett to do, like, a complete, you know, graphical update, you know, essentially just give it the, the Resident Evil remake treatment, and that probably would have been, like, way too much effort for them, which, again, I'm convinced is the only reason why they didn't put Silent Hill 1 on there, because, like, Silent Hill 1, unlike Silent Hill 4, is definitely well received by the entire fan base, but, like, I don't know, it just kind of pisses me off, you know? I mean, I would have loved to have seen Silent Hill 1 get the sort of Resident Evil remake treatment, but I guess considering the fact that Team Silent is no longer around, or uh, the fact that Konami doesn't tend to trust anybody, and by that I mean they just gave the HD collection to Hijink Studios, a, a game developer that's only been famed for puzzle games. Yeah. It's kind of sad how Konami treats this franchise, actually. I mean, if it isn't, if it hasn't got Metal Gear Solid on its title, they just really tend not to care about it, which I, I guess is really because of the stigma that survival horror is still niche by this point. I mean, considering the fact that a lot of popular horror games nowadays have moved to the indie scene, that's kind of saying something, but... I don't know, survival horror needs to, needs to have a comeback in the mainstream, I guess. And I am back for the third time this part, Jesus fucking Christ. I really gotta stop this sort of shit. We still got a lot of time to go, and we're still in the boring, stinky, smelly fucking sewers. Oh, what fun there is to be had. Ah, oh, damn it, I thought I was gonna sneeze there for a second. I apologize for all that. Anyway, hopefully this gets a little bit more interesting, because I'm gonna run out of things to talk about, because it's just more sewers. How intriguing. I think I've already talked about how I think that the hang scratches look a little bit too alien for Silent Hill. Or at the very least in terms of creature design, I mean like... I'm not alien in the sense of like Xenomorph, but really more in the sense that they bleed green. I think. Oh no, I'm pretty sure they do, like even if you don't have the blood settings changed as I mentioned in the previous part. That's... Strike me as kind of weird. Oh, here's the trap I was mentioning earlier. Ooh, what an ominous place. I'm sure nothing bad will ever happen here. Oh, uh, excuse me. Aha! It's an ambush! You know, like... This is quite threatening. Well... Oh. Well, the Hammer of Justice would've worked just fine. Even if, like, you don't have it. It'll just magically appear. For some reason. Shit. Those goddamn creatures, man. I kind of remember how dangerous the, the hang scratches were. They don't. They didn't really seem to be on a lot of my playthroughs, but uh, I don't know. They're just not that much to worry about, honestly. Or at least in my opinion, anyway. Experience is subjective, as a lot of people tend to say. Oh, thank God we're coming to the end of the part. That's very good news, because that means we can move on to some interesting shit, which is uh, going to happen quite a lot throughout the next part. In fact, I'm probably going to end up titling this part something like Filler, or Sewers Stink. I need to think of a, I need to think of a good sewer pun, actually. Damn, all I can think of is that Austin Powers joke, you know, where it's all like, This coffee smells like shit. It is shit, Austin. Oh good, we're out of the fucking sewers at last. This is a really shitty part. That was terrible. Well, seeing as we're nearing the end of the part, I am Scully, keep it new metal, and, uh, this part will be titled a sewer pun. Catch you next time.